Hi, it's Brittany from The Prairie, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are making the Boo Bag by Catsiopia Patterns. Uh, so the Boo Bag pattern is actually like three parts. There is um, a backpack, a like crossbody bag, and this cute little coin pouch. Um, so this one's the Tierra. There's a uh, Bella and Luna? No, Luna and Estrella. I think that's right. Anyways, I'll link it. You can look. Um... I made the cute little coin pouch. It's really cute. Um, it was a fun, quick make, so if you're looking for something last minute to make for Halloween, because, you know, it is creeping up. Uh, this. So cute. So I used, fittingly, the goat white, goat? The ghost white vinyl that just released from Mormino. Um, I used a little bit of the Void Kitty, uh, jelly vinyl that I sell on my website. I used a Mormino hot pink zipper with the little ghosty pool. Um, and then the other hardware is from Mormino. Also, I used white waterproof canvas to line it. And you know, I have to put a Heartwood and Hyde cork label. Anyways, super fun. This video is part of the Marathon Society um, spooky sewing marathon. That is three days. So this is my third video. Um, you can go watch the other videos that are releasing on the same day as this one. And even if um, it's no longer marathon day, you can go back and watch them. And you can watch everyone else's too. Lots of fun. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, I would absolutely love if you did. And then go ahead and check out all the other amazing YouTubers as well. Anyways, let's get sewing. Alright, let's go over the pieces to the tiara. I think that's how you say it. Um, okay, so we've got a little pattern piece here, and I'm just, um, using it to mark the eyes. Um, so we've got two exterior, two lining, or two little eyes. I'm not good at cutting ghost eyes, I guess. Um, I've got my zipper and tabs. The pattern has you cut four tabs from lining, but I'm just gonna do the exterior, and I think it'll be fine. Um, my little tab for my D-ring my wristlet, um, strap piece, um, I have a little woven label, not a woven label, that is a cork label, uh, my zipper pull, uh, my clasp, and my D-ring. Okay, so the first thing that the pattern tells you to do is prep your zipper. So we're going to go ahead and get our zipper pull on here. Oh, I also have um, some rivets. Okay, so you're going to put your tabs on here. You would be making what I like to call a zipper sandwich if you were using lining pieces. Um, the only reason I'm not, I almost cut them out of the waterproof canvas, um, is just because I didn't want it to be too bulky. This is a pretty small little project here. Um, actually, so sorry, time out. We're going to put the eyes on first because I have black thread in right now. So, just going to line this up here and make two little marks that hopefully I can still see. And we're going to put some double sided tape. They're so tiny. Um, I used black jelly vinyl for these. I thought it'd be fun. Okay, let's see here. Hopefully these look well placed. I put the dots in the center of the eye. There's measurements in the pattern too, but I was like, I don't need to measure eyes. Hey, I think it's good. Okay, so I just moved my stitch length down to a three. I'm going to pull my threads to the back and knot them off. Um, I don't think I've ever applicated anything this tiny on my industrial. I mean, there's been like the little kitty noses a little different though. Right, there's one. It's not 
terrible. <laughs> right? Lie to me, it's okay. Yeah, the only problem is because of how tiny this is, I have to hand crank the whole thing, but that's okay. Power to the people who can applique like this on like giant projects because my shoulder hurts already. Okay, so we're going to pull our threads to the back and knot them off as we go. might have stitched through it. I didn't think I was going to. But you never know. Alright, let's see if we can pull this one back first. That way I won't be able to like accidentally pull this one through. Okay. Let's try this one again. There we go. I think I had just caught it myself. Okay, so there's our little eyes. We just need to change our thread color now to white. Alright, so almost got this threaded here. And then we can move on to our zipper. I should have put my um, cork label on while that was going on, but that's fine. Um, it'll just have white stitching. We will put that on really quick. Because after I do that, I can go back to my normal stitch length for the rest. Okay. I'm going to eyeball this probably. Looks good enough. Alright, so I've been using a stitch length of four when I put these on. It's been working pretty well. Just a tiny adjustment here and there. Okay. And see, this is where normally pulling that thread back before you get there works really well so that you can get as close to your starting stitch as possible. Alright, so we're going to knot those and trim just like we did not for the eyes. I think probably these little prep things might take longer than the whole actual little pouch. But that's fine. It's important.
Okay, there we go. Front and back done. Now we can really go to our zipper. All right, so we're gonna sew across these tabs. On each side. And then we're gonna flip the tabs away and top stitch. And if you put the lining on, you would um, flip both and top stitch through everything. So there is our zipper. And then, okay, so this is the part in the pattern where it tells you to do the eyes, but we already did that. So next thing we're going to do is install this. All right, so we've got the zipper done and we are going to work on installing it. So we're going to take our front exterior piece and we want the zipper pull to be going to the left. Um, you know what? Let's make some center marks. Just so nothing gets misaligned. I'm not gonna put them on, uh, words. I'm not going to put them on... The lining pieces. I think it's fine. And just making real rough marks. Okay, so we are going to line these up and clip. Okay, and then we're going to take the lining piece. So we want our zipper to be right sides to the exterior, and then we want the lining to be right side to the wrong side of the zipper. So we're going to line that up and clip it down. Alright, and then we are going to stitch this all together. It's a little tricky because the zipper's not very long, so I kind of have to move the zipper twice. Always remember to have your needle down before you lift the presser foot to move the zipper. All right, so okay, so now we're going to top stitch. Um, I generally like to just top stitch on the exterior. Probably find out if I would have done it on the lining too later, but we'll see. Okay, I'm gonna clip that so it stays out of my way, and then we're gonna do the same thing on this side, line up the centers. line up our lining. I like to do 
the ends and then the rest kind of just falls into place. Okay, gotta move the zipper twice again. I had thought too late that it would have been really cool to use my neon pink thread with this. Would have been really cute. Okay, so we're just top stitching this side. Okay. Before we finish assembling, we're going to need to make our D-ring um, strap. I had thought I could just put, um, clip to my pop tab pool, but I forgot it's the ghost. It's not cut out. Um, in the pattern, it goes up here, but I think I'm gonna put it, like, down here. Yeah. Um, okay, so, oh, wrong size tape. You could draw a line down the center if you need to. I'm just gonna plop some tape down and make it work. But we're gonna be folding this in to the center. put the D-ring on here and I don't know I'm like where should I put it I don't think I want it like sticking out up here I'm gonna I'm gonna go right down here so I'm gonna base this on where we're going with. Hopefully we like it. <laughs> okay. Um, so you can make your wristlet strap here now too. So let's go ahead and do that. I am going to draw a line on this one. And then I've been using a fourth of an inch tape here and there to um, do my wrist straps. I know everyone likes using the half inch, but uh, this way I just catch the edge and it helps hold it. But when I stitch, it isn't in my seam allowance. At least usually. I'm really sorry if you can hear my entire family being so noisy. <laughs> I had wanted to get this done um, before anyone got home. That did not happen.
Okay, I like doing my straps like this. So I'm gonna punch a hole on each end. I'm also loving this uh, rainbow rivet or hole punch. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna line this up like this, and I like using the prettier side, so like the back stitch will be hid in there, if you will. Okay, and then I make sure that's gonna line up right, and you can just kind of hold this here and go through that hole, make sure everything's lined up, and just punch the next layer. Okay, so now we'll grab our rivet post and cap so we go through there and there make sure that is there um i do stitch these sometimes but like that's a lot of layers even for my industrial all right give that a good set and it is ready. And now all we have to do is finish assembling. All right, so we are, matching the top center of our body pieces. Oh, we should probably open that zipper up. Okay, so I am going to trim this down a bit just enough that I can see what's going on here. All right. So does she tell you? Okay. It doesn't tell you, but flip the tab in to the lining. Okay. And then we're clipping around flipping that tab in clipping around okay and then we have to leave an opening in the lining so I'm gonna tell myself leave an opening right there with my double clips. Okay. So we're going to stitch all the way around. We want to take our seam allowance in on the lining. Yes. Okay. With leaving our turn here. I'm going to put my seam allowance down a little bit from what the pattern tells me because I like the size of that and I don't want to go in too much, being a rebel. But I am still keeping the lining seam allowance a little bit bigger. little backstitch over that tab. Not a very big turning hole, but we will make it work. <laughs> um, let's see here. Let's use some pinking shears. Just a little bit. 
so that the curves set better. Sorry if the sound is annoying. Okay. Alright. I'm going to trim that down a tiny bit. Alright. <laughs> the world's smallest turning hole. Oh boy. It's fine. I'm gonna make it happen. I just hope I don't hurt my cork tag. Because you're not supposed to fold it. to grab it with the hemostats because I don't want to rip the vinyl, but there we go. Wouldn't call it the easiest thing to turn, but it wasn't bad. I'm just pushing my corner or the curve, the seam, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'm just kind of gently going along it as I go. And then for the corners. You want to try to press those out. Come on. I might have stitched too close to the tab or something. Oh, okay. It's because of how the tabs are. Okay. So we need to close this hole up. We'll make it look prettier once this is done. It says to top stitch. Let's see what I can do to mush this in here first. Because I really want these zipper tabs to pop out. Corners are hard. They're so hard. <laughs> oh, if I had two, it would be like little hands. Just running this, trying to get everything to lay flat. I don't know if I want to top stitch it. I feel like I'm going to 
catch the lining in some spots, but not in others. Maybe. Maybe not. Let's do it. It's what the pattern calls for. Except it's real bulky right here. I think if I do, I'm going to chew my vinyl up. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm indecisive. I'm not going to top stitch. It does look cute, but I don't think it has to have it. So anyways, here's my little boo bag. The tiara. We've got our little ghosty pool. Our little eyes. And our little wristlet strap. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to watch all the other Halloween sewing marathon videos. Um, I have the Marathon Society linked in the description. Have a great Saturday. Or whatever day you're watching it on. Bye.